So you've bought yourself a Bosch powered bike with the smart system. You know the basics and now you want to know how to use the e-bike flow app. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. So stay tuned. Hi folks, I'm Jason and welcome to eBike Centre. If you're not entirely sure about how the smart system works or the basics of the smart system, we have already done a video which you can check out up here, which goes through the very basic elements of the Bosch smart system. But today we're going to go through the eBike Flow app. To start with, we're going to go through the login procedure before carrying on with the other features of the app. The first thing you need to do is take your smartphone and go to the App Store or Google Play Store to find the Bosch eBike Flow app. Be aware that there's nearly always an advert at the top of the screen and the e-bike flow comes in below. There's also the old Bosch e-bike connect app as well. Don't download this if you've got the smart system. You need to download the e-bike flow app. Once that's downloaded, it will open you up onto the home screen, at which point it's time to sign in or log in if you've already got an account. First thing you need to do is create a login account. Bosch is gonna ask for lots of permissions, which nine times out of 10, you're gonna to have to say yes to and you have to create an email account that works for you. Next up, you've got to set your password and then agree to their terms of use. Next up, it will ask you to check your emails in order to verify your account. You then need to put the code that's in the email inside these boxes. Next up, you need to set up your profile. Next up, the app will ask you if you're happy to share your data with them to improve the app. You can choose your option below. Now, finally, it's time to connect to your bike. Now it's time to look at your bike to see which of these control units you have set up. The bike we're using has the LED remote, so we're gonna go down that route. Now it's time to turn on your bike. If you're unaware of how to do this, please check out our Bosch Basics video. Once your bike is turned on, it's time to press and hold the power button to activate the Bluetooth. At this point, it should start to connect to your bike. Your phone will no doubt ask you at this stage whether you're happy to pair. You have no choice here, you do need to say pair. Here's your home screen. At the top, it should say the name of your bike. Hopefully it's your bike. If not, we have a slight problem. At the top here, it tells you that your bike is connected. There's a welcome, plus you've got information about your battery life and the expected range of your bike in its current mode. Our bike is currently in eco mode. You've got the option to adjust customized riding modes and the mileage that is available on your current bike, along with find your local dealer. At the bottom, there are other menu options as well here, which we'll go through in a moment. But to start with, the first thing you need to do is register your bike to your app. You can do that by pressing on the settings icon below. Next up, it's time to click manage your e-bike settings. And now it's time to register your e-bike. By registering your e-bike, there are several benefits to this. The first being, if your bike is unregistered, you basically have an open system that means that anyone who's walking past your bike, if it's unattended, could essentially log into your bike on your behalf, at which point you're locked out of your bike. So we'd strongly suggest, even if you're, if you're not into your technology, that you do set the bike up to your app. In addition, you've got options such as e-bike lock, updates, digital service book, e-bike pass, and a theft report function, all available to you once you've registered the bike. The bike is now successfully registered. It's time to move to the next stage. Next up, the app will ask you if you wish to activate the e-bike lock. We would strongly suggest you do this. It's a great anti-theft deterrent, and you click on the button at the bottom. You now have two options that you can use to lock your bike. You've got the option of using your phone as a digital key, or you have the option of using the Kiox 300 display. If your bike doesn't have a Kiox display, you will not have this option. You have the phone only. We're going to choose the phone in this case. Click on that, and then select and continue. You should hear an audible noise once the bike is connected. There it goes. And you've just got to wait a small amount of time whilst the locks activate. Once you've set your phone up as a digital key, you've got to remember that you have to bring your phone with you each time you wish to use the bike in order to use it. Because if you don't have your phone, none of the electrical items on the bike will work. We're now all set. It's time to continue. Once your lock is set up, it will take you to the lock and alarm screen where you can adjust the settings. To turn the lock on or off, you can use the toggle switch just up here, as well as you can turn off or on the locking sound. In addition, there are further unlocking settings that you can activate from here. If you wish, you can go from your phone to the Kiox display by adjusting these two toggles. By using the Kiox display, all you need to do is remove the Kiox every time you want to lock the bike up, and that will disable all the electronics. 
you can also adjust the automatic unlock. By having this tab enabled, it means that you just need to walk up to the bike with your phone and when you turn the bike on, it will automatically unlock. If you turn this tab off, you'll actually receive a prompt from the smartphone app saying, would you like to unlock the bike? So that's the options that you have on these screens. Back in the main lock and alarm menu, you also have at the bottom the option of alarm and on bike alarm. What this is essentially showing you is if you have the e-bike connect plus module added to your bike, which is essentially a tracking device provided by Bosch, you have these options available to you too, but you have to subscribe to Bosch's Flow Plus app. When you buy the connect module, you get a year's free. After that, you're then looking at $34.99 a year or £3.99. It depends obviously on the user. It's a very good system, the tracking module that comes with the e-bike plus connect setup. It does mean that if someone does steal your bike, you'll get automatic alerts to your smartphone saying somebody is tampering with your bike. There'll be an audible alarm going off on your bike. And it does mean that you can track the bike's location if it's being stolen. And that's obviously very useful information to try and recover your bike. From the lock and alarm menu, we're gonna go back to the settings menu. And now it's time to set up the e-bike pass. The e-bike pass enables you to upload very useful information about the bike to the app. For instance, you can add the bike's frame number, normally found on the down tube, any special features of the bike that you want to include in the pass. The app will also tell you what components are fitted to your bike. You can also upload the e-bike's invoice or photos of the bike should you need to. From the settings page, you also have the ability to update the bike software. By clicking on this tab here, and then checking for e-bike updates. Click on this. In our case right now, we have got the latest update already installed, so there's nothing to do here. If there is an update to be had, very simply you click on OK and it will prompt you on the next steps, but it is a very simple process. We're now gonna go back to the main menu and look at customizing the riding modes. Your bike comes preset with various riding modes. Traditionally, you'll see Eco Tour Plus, EMTB if it's a mountain bike, or you'll see auto if it's a hybrid bike, and then turbo. You can, however, edit this list by clicking below, and you can choose various different options instead. For instance, if I don't want EMTB, I click on that, and then I might want auto instead. I click on that, press save, and now the bike has changed. I now have auto instead of EMTB. In addition, you can also adjust these modes by adjusting the characteristics within the mode. So in this case, you have assistance, the dynamic, max torque and max speed. So by adjusting the assistance with this slider at the bottom, you can ask the motor to give you more or less assistance in a particular mode. If you decide that Eco doesn't get, provide you with as much support as you would like, you can increase this, or if you find it's giving too much and you would like to put more input yourself, you can decrease the amount of assistance provided by the motor. I'm gonna go back to normal here. Also with dynamic, this will change the acceleration behavior of the bike. The more powerful you set this, the more input the motor will provide you with per pedal stroke. So as you engage the pedal, if you have it on powerful, there'll be more support from the motor than if you had it set to soft. In soft mode, you would need to provide more torque through your legs in order to get power from the bike. Again, I'm gonna go back to the standard setting. Max speed, most people won't be adjusting this, particularly in the UK and Europe, because 16 miles an hour is, is the absolute max. You can also adjust the amount of torque in each mode. Again, I wouldn't recommend doing this because ultimately in eco mode, it's very rare or very unlikely that you'll get to the full 85 newton meters of torque. What you're doing essentially is hampering yourself in terms of the amount of assistance you could get in total from the bike. However, if you're really struggling for battery range, you could decrease the amount of newton meters that are provided by the motor in order to save some battery life. However, there are other ways that you can do this, which we'll go through later, which I think are far more intuitive. So I'm going to leave this exactly as it was. Now we're gonna look into the route planning options that are available on this app by clicking on plan below. It will show you your current location and very much like all of the other online map apps that are out there, it will show your current location and then you just search where you'd like to go. We've decided we want to go to Chichester. So you would type in Chichester. We've already written that down. And here you go, here's the fastest route to get there. We will go into maps in more detail in a later video. The app also has a statistics page, which I'll click on now. 
As this bike hasn't ridden anywhere yet, there are no stats to display. So again, we'll go into the statistics in more depth in a later video. Finally, we're going to go into ride mode, which is the black button at the bottom. Click on that. And this essentially replaces the display on a screen. So the main menu screen here shows your speed in the middle, the mode of assistance that you're currently in. Our bike currently has its light on. You've got your battery of the bike here. So your battery range in percentage terms. You've got your battery range in terms of mileage terms down here, your riding time, distance, and your average speed. This swirl here also donates the motor's output. It's a bit like a rev counter on a car. So the faster your pedals are turning, the higher this swirl will be, indicating when you need to change gear. Swiping across, you've got your map set up here if you pre-plotted your route. There's no data here at the moment because the bike hasn't been ridden anywhere to give you any ele ele elevation, inf can't get that word out, elevation information. <laughs> you've got your power and cadence and your ascent altitude and max altitude. So for most people, these aren't really things they need, but they're nice to have. This is gonna be the main riding screen that you will be on. In order to get back out of the screen and go back to the main menu, you press the X button at the bottom. So that's it for now. There's gonna be more information available in part three. If you have in the meantime any questions, please don't hesitate to leave us some questions in the comments or get in touch on the phone or online. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you found this video useful. In our next video, we're gonna go in depth into some more of the advanced features that the eBike Flow app has, such as the integration with other riding apps. If you haven't done so already, we'd be very grateful if you can like and subscribe. And if we don't see you in store, we will see you in the next video. Cheers. Thank you.